Okay, now we, we do have blue cards, right? Okay. Um, this portion of our meeting is an opportunity to make your voice heard before the council, the administration, and the public specifically on this matter. As I noted earlier, your request to address the council forms should have already been turned into the clerk. Um, also, confrontational statements and our threats will not be tolerated. We ask that you conduct yourself in a civil manner and with the same courtesy that you would expect of others. Call the first speaker, please. And for those who might be the first time, you could use any one of these mics here. Uh, Mr. Chair, the first of three speakers, Chris Woking. Thank you and uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor President, Mr. Chairman, lady and gentlemen of the council. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this evening. My name is Chris Wolking and I hold no title other than anonymous face in the crowd and taxpayer who likes to vote. When the uh, wife's not paying close attention, I occasionally take on the role of Joe Sixpack, but that's neither here nor there. I'm here this evening to express my extreme disappointment that it's necessary to have this conversation at all. I cannot, for the life of me, understand why the city is squabbling with Mrs. Middlebrook over these marginal health insurance costs. I find this to be mean-spirited, I find it to be miserly, I find it to be parsimonious, and I find it to be unacceptable. It does not reflect who we are as Acadianans, it does not reflect the strength and compassion around which our community is built. I do hope the council will quickly adopt the necessary resolutions and or ordinances so the issue never rises again. It seems that folks have a lot of opinions these days about the police. My perspective is that law enforcement does a tough job on our behalf and we owe them due recognition for their service. I would include our firefighters in that for the purposes of this conversation and refer to them all generally as our first responders. I do appreciate the Mayor President's briefing this evening and I fully support the resources and support made available to the bereaved families of any first responder who falls in our service. Given the scope of these benefits, why in the world are we quibbling with Mrs. Middlebrook over the few dollars difference between the health benefits she recently enjoyed and the rates incurred by retirees? To my mind, in a well-run world, these health benefits would be provided without question and completely gratis for a period of at least six months after a tragedy like this occurs. After that, I cannot understand why the family is charged for health insurance at all, and certainly why not they would be charged for more, more for the same benefits they previously enjoyed. I do not know the Middlebrook family, but I would assume they access the health insurance system to a certain degree according to their needs, as we all do. The family's health needs will not rise appreciably as a result of this tragedy, so how can it be that our costs would increase? Why is it fundamentally necessary to ask for several thousand additional dollars to pay for their use of the exact same benefits that were previously in place? That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know much about how the cities and parishes budgets are formulated or run. I only know what I read in the newspapers. I do know we can afford micro parks downtown. I know we can afford to repaint the sheriff's fleet of vehicles on a whim and I know we can afford to pay the marshal's legal fees. Then I add up the amounts we spend to provide attractions in our city, things like Mardi Gras, Festival International, Downtown Alive, and all the rest. And don't get me wrong, I'm always down for a good party. If we can afford to provide ourselves with these things, why can, why can we not fund the few dollars in our budget to put this matter to rest? I pay property taxes to the city and to the parish, I imagine the funds come from different places and have to be directed different directions, but at the end of the day, I cannot believe none of these fiscal pots can accommodate this responsibility of ours. I understand this, the city and parish has not faced this question in 50 something years. I pray it's at least another 50 years before we have to answer this question again. When that day inevitably comes, our first responders deserve to know without question their families will be provided for to the full extent of our obligations should they leave for work one day and do not return home. As I understand the Mayor President's presentation, we already shoulder a substantial portion of these obligations. Please take the necessary steps to resolve this issue on the survivor's behalf. It's the least we should do 
and will demonstrate the best of who we are. I appreciate this opportunity to share with you this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Scott Rummel. Good evening. Uh, my name is Scott Rummel, the Vice President of the Police Association of Lafayette, I'm here speaking on behalf of the Police Association. Uh, a couple things I want to bring up first is uh, we were talking about the funeral benefit, eight to five hundred dollars, and uh, that goes to the family. It's a payout. I want you to understand that I buried my two-month-old son, and it cost sixty-five hundred dollars for that, and that was at a fifty percent discount because he was not the size of a regular person. So I can only imagine eighty-five dollars, a hundred dollars is not going to cover that, and there's going to be some more needed for that. Uh, sick leave payout. There's only two ways that you can get that. One is you retire, so you've done your time. You've done your 25 or 30. Uh, or you die. You're killed in the line of duty. Uh, something like that happens. Uh, I, I don't want to say that that's amusing uh, because we, you, you think that we're going to get some more applications based off of that. Uh, it's kind of a sad thing to think about. That you have to do all your time, get that benefit later, or you have to be brutally murdered and left in a store to die. Uh, why are we here? Uh, why are we here? I would imagine that you guys have been reached out to by many people. And that's why we have this emergency meeting going on. That's why there's people talking about what's the city doing? Why are they dragging their feet? What's going on? I can tell you this. We have met with Mr. Boudreaux. We have met with Mr. Robodeau, and We've had many discussions over what needs to be done and what could be done. Um, I'm hoping that we are still moving in a positive direction to fix whatever problems may need to be fixed. Um, the one thing that we have asked for or that we think would be fair uh, for the family is the continued health insurance. Uh, the city to continue to pay their portion as if that officer were still here in this room today so that his wife or kids could go to uh, the hospital, get checked out for appointments or whatever, and the city would still pay their portion. Uh, we would like for that benefit to be for life. That's what we feel is fair. This officer would give his life in a line of duty. This officer, firefighter, park policeman would give his life in a line of duty so that this benefit could continue for his family. I know, look, I am in, I'm not a, a government official. I, I don't know how these things work. Uh, all I know is I need to come to do my job, protect you, protect my family, protect the other citizens of Lafayette. I leave all the rest up to you guys. Uh, I just hope that you would take care of us in that respect. So the health insurance is the main issue while we're here, guys. Um, I, I think that it is something that we could fix relatively easily. Um, and, and to my knowledge, the last meeting that I had with Mr. Robodeau, uh, we were still looking at that option. And I would encourage each of you to research this. I know some stuff was put up on the board uh, that Mr. Robodeau says he's got, that he checked, verified, double checked, but Mr. Boudreau offered a contradiction to one of them. And so is it set in stone? No, it's not. We won't know these things until we have something in black and white sitting right in front of us in paper. And that's what we need to do. We need to stop going off of emails and telephone calls and let's get it hard, black and white, let's see what's happening and let's make a decision from there. I was told that we want to be the best in the state of Louisiana to offer benefits to their employees. We're well on the way, well on the way. I think there could be more done though. We're the fourth largest city in the state, which means that most likely we're the fourth largest police department in the state. People are getting raises around, uh, the state police, New Orleans, other municipalities. Other municipalities are looking at what's going on here and they're changing the way they do things. We hadn't had anybody die in 50 years in the line of duty. That's what brought this to our attention. I think it started out as something that we just overlooked and we understand that. We're just asking that we bring this up to date. <clears throat> what do you want to see? As, as a board, what do you want to see? Do you want to see your police officers, firemen taken care of or would you not? Not all the jobs in the private sector, you're right, we're, we're not like the private sector. But I come to work every day knowing that either my gun or somebody else's gun could be used to kill me. And that my kids won't see me come home. There's a big difference there. FOP and the police union do offer a payout. We do offer a $10,000 payout. That's a volunteer union that you can join. You don't have to. So not everybody gets that. That is also paid for. Police Association, police Association of Lafayette is paid for by the police officers who have joined our union. It's taken out of their check monthly. This is something that's important to us, and we ask that you address the issue. If you can correct it, we would appreciate it. Thank you.
Officer Rommel. Hold on one second. Sorry. Mr. Terrio. A couple of things I want to address, and before um, we get this out of hand and talk with the private sector, uh, number one, the accrued sick leave, and uh, Mr. Robodeau, I think that applies to all employees uh, getting paid out, not just fire and police. That's where I was going with this. So I'm not saying that uh, a comparison, which I think you kind of threw out toward me, was saying that, hey, in the private sector, uh, we don't get benefits like that. Hopefully you heard what I said to Mr. Boudreau, that, that the fire and police are different and that people in the private sector don't put themselves in the line of fire. So let's make sure we don't twist any words here and put that out in the media that I don't support the fire and police. I've been doing this for 10 years, and there's not one time, not one time when the police department has come to this council and asked for something that I said no. Not once. Now, the first part was dealing with the private sector. The second part, which I want to mention to you and, and, and those listening, is that, look, I've said this to countless people. We are the legislative body. The administrative side is the, is the one that's been doing the negotiating. I'm not passing the buck on the administration. I'm not saying they're, they're not doing what they're, they're, they're supposed to be doing because they are. But it is their responsibility to negotiate this. At this point, and I'm speaking only of myself, nothing has been presented to this council resolution, ordinance, any kind of plan or policy for us to vote on, okay? That is brought by the administration that has to do their due diligence after all the information that was provided tonight and provide the best, the best possible benefits for what you guys go through. So um, by all means, um, look, forgive me, but um, I don't make light of what happened. This is serious. But there are differences between the private sector and the public sector. And by doggone it, I'm going to bring them out. That's my job. And if people don't like it, tough. But when it comes to the police and the fire, again, you find one time that I voted against you and not giving you what you needed. That's all I have for now. That's it. Next speaker, please. Final speaker, David Stanley. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting me be here. Um, I just wanted to touch on some of the stuff that Scott, Corporal Rummel touched on. I'm, I'm Corporal David Stanley. I'm also on the board of the local police union. Um, some of it's repetitive to what he said. Th this is a volunteer police association. It's not a government entity. It's strictly police officers that are allowed to be here and uh, be in this association, and they pay dues. And out of those dues, we do pay benefits. Um, we don't have the luxury of, of, and I say luxury, maybe that's not the right word. We can't tax people and force money, income, to be able to pay out monies. It's all voluntary, um, and we do what we can in that aspect. Um, it was brought up about the, the public sector, and I, I know there was just some conversation about that. Um, there are differences in the public sector and the private sector. The, not a single citizen that I know of was asked to run into the Grand Theater. It was all police officers. There wasn't a citizen that was asked to go in an apartment complex two years ago to look for an armed robbery suspect. Corporal Carl Ratcliffe did that and got shot. My friend, my brother, Corporal Michael Middlebrook, went in a convenience store and was killed trying to help our citizens. There is a difference in the private sector and the public sector. He did that trying to help. Um, all we're asking is that his widow not be burdened with an increase in premiums. That's all we want. I think uh, the mayor had said it's about $300 a month. I don't think that's going to break the city. There's been a lot of explanation of benefits financially that she's entitled to. Um, I'd ask any one of you that are married, have kids, is $10 million worth the life of your spouse or your child? $20 million? How much? What is? I don't think there's a dollar amount. 
I think those benefits have already been paid with Mike's blood in a convenience store. I was there. I don't know if any of you guys were. I was kind of busy dealing with the process of, of my friend being killed, so I, I, I wouldn't know if y'all were there. But I was there. I went to that store. I saw my other brothers with me. I saw their response to seeing Mike on the floor. What's that worth? What is the dollar amount? I don't know. I just know we owe it to his family to uphold that obligation that we made at his funeral that she is our family and we're going to take care of her. I know I'm not going to forget how this goes. And I know the police department and I know the citizens are not going to forget and they are going to hold everybody in this situation accountable. It's not really what I wrote down, but that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Was that the final speaker? Okay. Any council members? Any additional comments, Mr. Robido? Any? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Zone. What I hope we've been able to convey today is that if we look at the benefit package that Lafayette provides uh, compared to any other municipality in the state of Louisiana, we far exceed what any other municipality does for the surviving spouses. Accrued annual sick leave is better than any other municipality. The lump sum benefit that we pay is more than double the next best municipality. The health insurance benefit that we provide is cheaper than any other municipality as it relates to their surviving spouse. That doesn't even factor in that our rates of 300 and something dollars a month compared to Baton Rouge's 700 and something dollars a month for our officers while they're working for us are saving 400 or close to $400 a month for however long they're employed here. Everyone needs to understand that there is no price. There is no price when you lose a life. And whether that's a utility worker, a public works employee, fire or police, that surviving spouse is left in a difficult situation that the rest of us don't even want to imagine. But as the facts show, we provide over three and a half, or the surviving spouse is provided with over $3.4 million of benefits, with two point something million of that coming from LCG. And can we do more? Certainly. Should we consider it? I'm, I'm all ears. And we are going to continue to look at what we can do for the health insurance. But to suggest that if we don't do that, we somehow are terrible, we're still ahead of everybody else. We provide benefits in excess of everybody else. And that needs to be known. I want to thank the council for allowing us to have this briefing so we could understand that Lafayette does lead by example and these other municipalities are going to look to see what benefits we provide to adjust theirs and we can all do better we can all do better I can do better at communicating and building trust between LCG our employees, the media, the general public. But there's a few things I have to say. Three days after the tragedy and two days before we were able to bury one of our own, an attorney in the union began a campaign to demonize Lafayette Consolidated Government, a campaign very limited on facts, 
just rumors and half-truths. These are the actual quotes from the local attorney who used the tragedy to try to make a name for themselves and in the process has caused irreparable damage to our great community. Firing police officers that protect and serve our city are basically being told, don't die today. That's the message LCG is sending to the first responders of our community. LCG is telling them, we're not going to take care of you. We think it's shameful. We think it's unconscionable. LCG and Mayor President Joel Robodeau failed this hero's family. I've talked to folks in other states, state police, and pretty much across the board, people take care of their fire and police killed in the line of duty, and apparently, we don't. This is not how many other cities like Baton Rouge handle health benefits for the surviving family members of officers killed in the line of duty. LCG's message is, if you die in the line of duty, your families are on your own. You can say anything you want about me, I can take it, even lies. But do not lie about our city. And frustratingly and sadly, the media ate it up. They were content to simply regurgitate the misrepresentations. We can do better. I'm not asking for Watergate-level research, but a few phone calls and simple internet searches would have provided all this information you saw here tonight. As any journalism major knows, it's more important to be accurate than first. And as we all work hard to promote Lafayette as this great cultural city with great food, great music, great people, we've got headlines sprayed all across the internet over the last several weeks. Some of the headlines read, LCG failed to keep promise. LCG has failed his family. LCG failed Hero's family. Lafayette is failing the widow and child of slain police officer. Slain police officer's family to lose insurance. Middlebrook family health benefit costs skyrocket. National media headlines. Widow and children of murdered officer told they'll lose benefits. Louisiana parish government exposed for horrible treatment of widow to slain officer. To everyone that's listening, these lies last forever. Once they hit the internet, anyone that searches Lafayette could very well stumble on and make decisions about whether they want to visit, whether they want to move here, whether they want to become a member of our great police force. And all of these headlines will factor into their decision. I hope we have proven tonight that Lafayette can be proud of the benefits that they offer. Like I said before, I would argue that they're the best in the state. And every councilman has told me, if we find out otherwise, then we're willing to fix it. We have had meetings with the union. We've had meetings with the family. We've had meetings with anyone that wants to have a meeting and called and asked to schedule a meeting. We will fix whatever it is that needs to be fixed. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you again for the opportunity to present the facts. Lafayette's benefits exceed everyone else's. And if there's an example where they don't, then let's work together. Let's not go with the gotcha mentality. Come and tell us about it. We will all discuss it, and we will figure out what the best step is. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'm finished. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to add to that, in particular for the members of this council, it was mentioned um, under the circumstances that presented itself, I, I did in my capacity as chairman uh, meet with the representatives of the union. And, and I could tell you that those meetings were 
uh, very cordial, uh, even under the circumstances. And, and I did assure them, and the mayor president just alluded to it, is that I was confident that this council, if there was something out there that could be done that was not being done, if there was something better that we would certainly work toward. And I even told them that I'd call a meeting immediately. The problem with this situation had a lot to do with timing. Unfortunately, timing became of essence. And there were things that some wanted to be done that could not be done within that timeline. But as it was requested, that doesn't stop any considerations from being made. Um, I did say that I do not mind. I would love to be the city that is known as the one that takes care of the fallen, the survivors of the fallen better than anyone else. I said that. And I said that it would be not only good for those families, but in fact it would be something that speaks to our recruitment and our retention of people that a man or a woman who works for LCG, or in particular in this case, the police department, that they would be assured that they would be taken care of better than anyone else could take care of them. A lot of information here tonight shows that we're already there. The question is, what more can we do? So I, I accept this challenge. What disappoints me is some of the calls that I had with you all, and that's what made me see the need to call this meeting, is because we did take a lick. We took a beating that we didn't deserve, that we didn't ask for, and that we could not control. Individually as members, I've seen comments on social media. I've seen some of those same articles that was referenced, some of the same coverage. Whether it was the intent of or not, the blame landed on the nine people who sit here and the one person who sits over there. And then it was wrapped with the entire government. And that was wrong. That was wrong. Where do we go from here? Is to continue to be the best that we can be. The mayor president has expressed the willingness to continue to work toward better. I have an open communication with the representatives of the union. They have indicated that as long as we're continuing to talk, that they want to work towards something better and have input. I have done a lot of research of other municipalities, but in particular the Baton Rouge, because Baton Rouge had been mentioned quite a bit, and we're still getting information in. And you will have that. You will have whatever is necessary if and when consideration needs to be given. Um, Mayor President, again, I thank you for your response. Um, I think this was our first briefing with you. And um, unfortunately, it wasn't under the best circumstances. But I thank you for the information that was provided. Um, I would request if, if you're willing that you share that presentation uh, with the council electronically, please send it to the clerk uh, for members to have it for their continued review. Uh, and, uh, and if in fact that you identify something as an administration, I ask that you bring it to us with great speed with great speed because every member I've talked to up here and they could speak if I'm wrong but they want to do what's best and the idea that 
any one of the individuals sitting up here don't care is just wrong. Everybody was hurting. And a lot of people still hurt. But Lafayette is better. Lafayette is better than what we've shown. Just sitting here, I've gotten messages from Alexandria and Baton Rouge. We are being watched. But they also want to know what we're doing. So this is going to conclude our briefing. Again, members, I thank you all for showing up at this short moment. For the public who came out, I thank you all for your participation um, as we continue to deal with this situation. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>